Honestly, I wanted to start sewing an hour ago, but for an hour I've been in front of my mirror like cowl neck, v-neck, cowl neck, v-neck. And welcome back to my channel so today I'm tackling another project I have never tried before and I'm going to make a cowl neck slip dress so I got this fabric yesterday and I am completely in love with it I kind of want to make like a thousand things out of it now but I don't know if it's bad to just like make my whole closet like one pattern but I'm kind of tempted to so I want to make a cowl neck slip dress and I also wanted to just make a v-neck slip dress and I was also thinking this would be like the cutest like vintagey like silk button-up like <laughs> Seriously though, if you guys want to see a silk button-up tutorial, um, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll go back and get more of this and do that next because I just, I love it so much. It's so cute with a little piping around it. <laughs> okay, well that's not what we're doing today even though I'm insanely tempted to just switch it around, but I have a plan for today. I'm very excited about it because um, I've never made a cowl neck and I don't make long dresses usually either, so this will be kind of a lot of firsts for me. So I have two yards of this fabric and it is a very silky and lightweight fabric. So it'll be perfect for this design. So I think I'm going to do a very elegant cowl neck dress. It'll be one piece and it'll also have a slit on the leg just for a little sauciness. And I think it'll turn out really cute. So I'm really hoping I don't screw it up because if I do, I'm gonna have to go get more of this fabric because I'm just in love with it and I want to make a thousand things out of it. So wish me luck today. So while I was working with this fabric, one of the first things I decided to do was cut off this very scraggly edge. So I just put a little notch into my fabric and ripped it down. You just have to make sure with really thin fabric that it doesn't go the wrong direction and turn all crazy, but mine worked out pretty nicely. After that, I measured out how big I wanted the skirt to be and I started measuring out my fabric. And so with this pattern, because it is all the one piece and I really didn't want to mess up with this fabric, I did cut all my pieces out a little bit bigger than I thought I would need them, just so that I would be less likely to make an error that I would have to recut my fabric for. <laughs> You can tell I was really nervous from the indecision there. And so this is the first piece you'll need and it is our front piece. So here are the measurements for it and I just cut out one of these pieces. And of course next we're going to need the back piece. So here are the measurements for that. And I also only cut out one back piece as well. And then to do a little half lining on this dress, you're going to take your back piece and you're going to trace the top half of it just to cut out a very small piece so we can use it to get a finished edge along the top. And you just cut out the top, give it about two inches and cut straight across the bottom. The other piece we'll need is to finish off the little slit that we're going to do. So this is the measurements for this little rectangle piece. And then the last pieces you will need are just some really long thin strips to make into tie straps for the dress. And after all of that measuring, I was already very tired but very excited to start this project. All right, we finally finished cutting out all of the pattern pieces, which is always the most nerve-wracking part because I really don't wanna screw it up and it's always like a giant puzzle put together, but I think I did a good job. So I'm going to work with the back piece first because on the front piece, I kind of made it curved in a little bit so it would fit my body a little bit better. But on the back piece, I kind of just left it as a giant rectangle because I want to add darts to it. So I'm adding darts because if you had just kind of cut it or like, like a dress shape, it would have gotten like a weird puckering on the back. So this will make it a little bit more contoured to our body, which I think will make it look a lot better. So I'm going to lay out our piece pretty flat. So from this kind of like top corner here, I'm gonna fold it straight down like so. And I think starting about here, I want to start taking the dress in. So that is 10 inches down from the little corner here. So I'm going to kind of make it curve in about an inch or so and then I want it to curve back out a little bit at a slower angle. So the whole thing is about 10 inches wide. So I'm going to pin this on the other side too by matching up these seams here. So now these seams are pretty close so I can just kind of transfer the same pins onto the other side. So after I looked at them kind of in the mirror, I realized that I want them to be a little bit closer together. So I'm just going to shift those down 
a little bit more, keeping the same exact pleat shape, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew those. Okay, so now I'm going to finish the top edge of the cowl neck and to allow it to like lay nicely like this, we cut this part very long here down to the arm seam. So I'm going to fold that over three inches, pin it in place, and then on this little edge here, I'm going to hem it so that it's all finished. And then that's just how the top is going to look underneath everything. So I'm going to measure it down three inches, pin it in place, hem it, and then baste the side seams down together. I think I realized why my neck is sore. I feel like when you just dance to K-pop a little too hard. Like, no regrets, I'm just a little in pain. Just a little baby him. So little, little baby. Little baby him. So I actually ended up doing two inches down and I'm going to go press it before I do little basting stitches on the edges here. Right now there is a lot of adjusting I have to do to the back piece, which I knew when I cut it out I was going to have to modify it quite a bit with adding in the darts and everything. But so the big U that I cut out in the back is a little bit too wide because when I wear straps with it I think they're going to come about to here. So these need to come in a little bit. And I already cut out the little lining piece that we're also going to be using there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this in half and I'm going to take it in just a little bit to make this U a little bit tighter. And then I'm going to use this as a pattern piece to retrace these ones and the back is also a lot higher than I want it to be because I wasn't sure where it was going to hit on my back so I'm also going to cut it down probably like two inches so I'm going to sew this move it down two inches onto the back piece and then trace it and cut it out So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these long thin strips that we cut out earlier and sew them pretty close to the fold so that I can make them into really tiny little straps that we can sew into the dress. So I'm probably going to put them not even all the way to my presser foot, I'm going to just make them as small as I possibly can with still being able to turn them out. Okay, so last night I worked and I finished making all of the tiny little straps and they are very thin and I just went ahead and cut the strips in half so that I would have four strands because I think I want to do little tie shoulders so I'm going to set these aside for a minute because the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to finish the top edge on the back piece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little baby back piece that we made and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tiny hem along the bottom edge of it like we did on the front piece basically so now that the edge is hemmed, I'm going to take it and I'm going to put the pieces pretty side to pretty side with the back pieces and I'm going to pin them in place and then at these little corners up here, I'm going to take one of our straps and I'm going to put it below this fabric. I'm going to pin it in place right in the middle of this piece. And then when I sew, I will already have our little strap in there and I'm going to sew all along this edge. All right, so now you can clip these seams right here and make little notches in this edge right here so that it lays flatter. And then when you turn it out, you should already have your cute little straps and the top should be a completely finished edge. Okay, so here is the back piece now and the top is finished and it has the little straps in it. And that is what the lining looks like. It's just a little half lining. And it is also lined on the little armhole area. Now on the front piece, only the very top is finished there. So we still need to finish the armhole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some bias tape out of this fabric and the way that you do that is you take some leftover fabric and you're going to fold it at a 45 degree angle and now I'm going to cut down this line and then I'm going to take my little measuring tool and I'm going to cut a piece out that is an inch and a half wide. Alright, so now I'm going to take it to the iron I'm going to fold this in and fold in the other side so that the two raw edges are facing each other. So now that we have our cute little piece of bias tape, 
I'm going to open it up and on one of the folds that we just pressed, I'm going to pin it to my little armhole on my front piece and I'm going to stitch it. Now I'm going to turn it on to the back side. I'm going to add some little notches in here really quickly so that it can go around the curve a little better. And then I'm going to turn this edge down and pin it in place and sew it. And at the top up here, I'm going to add in one of our straps so that we can also finish that off. Okay, so I sewed the bias tape in and it is looking really good. So the next thing to do is finally put the pieces together. So the way I'm going to do this is to get a finished edge on top again is I'm going to take our back piece and because we added this extra layer right here, I'm going to fold it up and I'm going to put our armhole seam on our front piece right up on the seam that we sewed them together with. I'm going to pin that in place and then you can just take this little flap here and fold it over the front piece and then if you sew those together and turn it out it'll be encased by that little layer there and it'll give us another finished edge which we always love so I'm going to sew it like that at the top and then all the way down the sides I'm just going to sew them together like we normally would and this fabric that I'm using does unravel like a lot so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew it regularly and then I'm going to serge it but if you don't have a serger, you can always just do a zigzag stitch on your machine or you can do French seams where you sew it wrong sides together first, cut the seam really thin, and then fold it over and sew the pretty sides together. And it'll encase the seam fully, but I'm just going to use my serger. And I was pretty generous when making this pattern, so I think I'm probably going to take it in quite a bit while I sew it down the side seams. And I definitely made the skirt bigger than I want it, so I'm also going to just take that in a little bit to my liking. And right now we're only going to sew the right side seams together because on the left side seam we're going to add a zipper there, so just leave that one open for now. Alright, so here's the first look at the dress on, and I'm very happy with the cowl neck. I think it's very pretty and elegant, and I think the back is also looking pretty good. So, obviously it is pretty big on my waist right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it off and flip it inside out, and then I'm going to start pinning it on me so that I can make it fit a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to take our lovely pins, the star of this part of the show, and I definitely want to take it in more at the waist. I'm going to add some pins here. I think I want to take it up a little bit more up top, so I'm going to do that on both sides. I think that already looks a lot better. And this dress is kind of like a triangle right now, and I think I just want to make it more gradual going down. And then I do think I also want to add the slit right here. So I'm going to go ahead and baste around that really quickly, and then I'm going to try it back on. Okay, so I just basted it around the edges and it fits a lot better already. And I also sewed up the other side to about here so that we can insert the zipper here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and sew that for realsies. Um, but I think I also want to add in the slit now. So I'm going to just kind of look at it and I think I want it to start right here. It should end like right down here. I think that's pretty straight. And so again, I'm just going to take it off and cut that down and pray that it's not in the wrong spot. Okay, that was extremely nerve-wracking, but I think I like the way it looks. So I am very happy with that. So now I'm just going to go and sew all the seams that I basted around, and then it is time to add in the zipper, I think. Actually, instead of adding the zipper next, because I don't want this fabric to accidentally tear and make the slit higher, I'm going to go ahead and finish that off first. So I'm going to take this long strip that we cut out earlier, and I'm going to cut it in half, and then at the top, leave about an inch before cutting it into two pieces. And so now I'm going to take our slit and lay it down. And now I'm going to take one side of our slit, and I'm going to take the corresponding side of this little piece that we cut out. I'm going to lay them pretty side to pretty side making sure that the end of the top of our piece here is the top of the slit. I'm going to pin them in place, and then I'm going to pin the other side of the piece to the other side of the slit. So after you pin it, it should look like that. 
And so now I'm just going to sew around it as close as I can get. And at the top, I'm going to go up a little bit further so that I'm right in the center of it. And then I'm going to go down the other side. So um, while I was finishing off this slit, my camera actually ran out of space and I didn't notice, so I didn't record this next part. But basically to finish off the slit, I just sewed around the perimeter like I showed you guys. And then I cut around the piece that we had sewn on it so it was a little bit thinner so I could just fold the edges in and do basically a little hem onto the back side. And to get the top to lay nice and flat in the little corner where we did the pivot, I'm going to cut that very close to the seam, making sure you don't cut through it. And then you can just turn it out and make sure that you hem it all the way up to the top. Okay, so I am very close to finishing this dress and I'm really liking how it's looking. I finished up the slit in the front and it looks really good. And so the last things that I have to do are put in the zipper and hem it. So I try it on the dress and I put pins down the side where I want the zipper to go. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and put it in. And so I'm going to be using just a white invisible zipper and it's a really long one. And I already took it to the iron and pressed it open so we can sew it. So I'm going to put it in place and get stitching. Okay, so the zipper is sewn in and it is looking really nice, very sleek. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bottom so that is so that is it so that is so that it is a length that I like. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the bottom a little bit shorter because I think that's the length that I want it to be. And then I'm just going to do a very simple rolled hem all the way around it. Alright, the dress is finally done! I'm so excited! It looks super cute and I am actually really excited about it because I love the fabric and love the way it moves so I'm going to finally show you guys what it looks like! And here is the finished slip dress! my first cowl neck ever. I am very happy with the results. I think it's very nice and I feel like with this fabric it just like blends in very nicely so it's not like too out of my comfort zone or anything and I really like the silhouette of this dress because I really don't own anything like this right now and the fabric works with it so it almost has those vintage type vibes which we always love. And while I was modeling this part a bird flew very close to me and it was very exciting so let's watch an instant replay shall we? Look at that bird. Yes I was very excited if you can't tell. Um, I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful, and if you decide to make the dress for yourself, I would always love to see it. You guys can always tag me on Instagram if you'd want to. And I always get so excited when I get to see you guys like actually recreating my stuff. It's so exciting that you guys like actually use my videos to like make your own clothes. I love that. And if you're new to my channel, I post videos every Friday if you would want to subscribe and see what I do next. So I hope to see you guys there. Bye!